little something different for you today, and it starts with this. Jose Cuervo tequila. That's right, tequila. I can hear what you're thinking. Why is Danny talking about tequila in a car channel? Well, it's because of what's in these two mysterious jars. If you've watched my videos over the years, you know that I'm big on sustainable technologies that make cars lighter, faster, and more fuel efficient. This is one of those things, and it's super cool. Here's the skinny. Ford has teamed up with Jose Cuervo to explore the potential of bioplastics using residual waste from the tequila production process. Jose Cuervo processes two to 300 tons of agave every day. Some of the agave waste is tilled back into the farmland as compost, and some of it is made into paper, but much of it is burned as waste. Jose Cuervo tequila is distilled from the blue agave plant. In this jar, it's full of residue. It's full of leftovers. It's full of stuff that would have normally gotten thrown out or burned. These are agave fibers that were ground up from the base of the agave plant. This jar is full of something very special. It's 20% agave plastic. That is, 20% of these fibers went into making this plastic. Ford is a pioneer in the use of biomaterials in automotive applications, starting first with the use of Midwest soy as a base for seat cushion foam, and then Canadian wheat straw in the bins of the Ford Flex. These agricultural products were chosen as much for their properties as their proximity to the auto plants. Jose Cuervo's Blue Agave Farms are close to Ford's operation in Mexico. Ford's typical plastic materials contain glass or talc fibers. Debbie Molesky from Ford's Sustainability Research Department filled me in on the details. These natural fibers are tough, they're durable, they perform to meet specifications for various parts that we're looking at, but the real kicker is they're lighter in weight. Yep. So both the glass and the talc are, have high density and the natural fibers are very light. I'm a big fan of bamboo. The plant has amazing qualities and it's better than trees at capturing carbon. I asked Debbie if bamboo might play a role in future Ford composites. We are looking at bamboo extensively as well. The fascinating thing about bamboo is certain varieties can grow four inches yep. in one day. And so people say you can watch them grow. It's a lightweight fiber. It's a beautiful fiber and it's very durable. So we are looking at it for applications for some of our Asia plants. I think that we will be able to utilize whatever is grown in a particular area. So maybe bamboo is appropriate for Asia facilities, whereas this agave will be appropriate for Mexico. I also think that the yeah, fibers have different technical issues associated with them. This agave fiber has some heat stability issues that we're currently addressing. So we'll probably launch at some place where that won't be an issue, whereas bamboo may not have the same technical issues. So people always ask, what fiber are you looking at? And I say there's probably, with the 400 pounds of plastic that is on a typical Ford vehicle today, I think there's a place for all of them. Ford is researching industrial waste streams for the potential to be included in sustainable plastics as well. One of our real major interests is to establish the local economy, but we've also been working a lot with other major industries. So um, partnering with Coca-Cola, we demonstrated that their plant bottle material, which is used on Dasani water bottles, 30% mm -hmm. bio-based material, we pulled it into a strand um, wool fabric out of it, and the whole interior of the vehicle was made using Coca-Cola's um, plant bottle. Cool. So major companies working together has been really an exciting part of our work and sort of sharing resources. So with the Jose, they have a, a byproduct, something that the waste product, um, Heinz had a similar tomato fiber waste product that we're looking at. But even just combining our volumes with some of these big companies can get these bio-based materials affordable for everybody. So how long does it take for a new sustainable bioplastic to reach production? You know, 
I can give you an example. The wheat straw material that we did with Canada was um, from beginning to plopping it on the Ford Flex for storage bins about 18 months. Soy foam, many more technical issues had to be addressed there. And so that one was closer to five years. Waste is not waste. It's just what we've been, had the luxury of considering or calling waste in the past. I think as we develop a circular economy and everybody is used to utilizing side streams from everybody else's process, yep. that um, we will be a better society for it and a cleaner one. We are even looking at carbon dioxide, greenhouse gas itself, as a building block to make polymers. So imagine being able to take greenhouse gas, whether it comes from a coal-fired um, electricity plant, um, and instead of emitting it into the atmosphere, we're able to incorporate it into the next generation of Ford vehicles.